I actually have a TV in my bedroom, which most people are surprised about, but I really only have it there for when I'm sick. So that's when I'll use it, but on a regular basis, it, the bed should be about sleep. That's what I really try to have my bedroom for. Welcome back to this 14-day masterclass. I'm talking to uh, Dr. Shelby Harris, and today we're gonna talk about how does a real sleep expert prepare for going to bed? Are you like, because you're an expert, do you do everything perfectly? Do you practice what you preach? I wish I could say yes, but no, I don't. I am very consistent, but not perfect. And I think that's the goal for everyone. I want people to do these things as often as you can, but don't become so hyper-focused on it, you lose that ideal of once in a while going out or having a glass of wine late. Just don't make a habit out of it. No. So for me, I try most days to practice what I preach, but I don't get so hung up on it if I don't for a day here and there. So how do you sleep? I sleep well, and I think the goal for most people that I, at least with my, my patients, is I say, are you content with your sleep five nights a week? And I'm content with my sleep five nights a week, so I'm, I'm a good sleeper overall. Well, that sounds good. We spoke also about the perfect daytime routine. Is there anything that we should or shouldn't do um, during the evening? Yeah, I think there's a number of things that you should be thoughtful about when it comes to the nighttime. So we were talking about caffeine, using it strategically earlier in the day if you want to, but trust, there's no perfect answer for it because some people are a little more sensitive than others um, to caffeine, but try to limit it about eight hours before bed. That's where the sleep journal is great. So you can actually see what time you're having caffeine and see if it impacts your sleep. And caffeine can cause you to have trouble falling asleep, but it also can cause more awakenings or shorter sleep at night. So keep that in mind. Same thing with alcohol. So we always tell people to limit alcohol within three hours of bed. So alcohol can make you have trouble with sleep quality and more awakenings at night. Other things to consider are limiting heavy meals within about three hours of bed, because that can make it harder for you to fall asleep, lead to indigestion, but that doesn't mean you have to go to bed with nothing in your system. So I'm not someone who can go to bed not having eaten for hours. I need to have a light snack, and a mix of some sort of a carb and a protein is actually really helpful for some people. So for me, it's often Greek yogurt with a little bit of fruit in it. I've got oh, the protein and the mix of carb. It can be cheese and a cracker, a little bit of a nut butter and a banana. Those are all awesome things. And how about, uh uh, drinking hot tea before going to bed because that would calm yeah. you down. Is, is there any? I mean, it's calming for your brain as long as it doesn't have caffeine in it. That's totally fine. But if you're someone who's a little more susceptible to urinating a lot at night or going to the bathroom many times, we usually try to have people limit liquids before about an hour to two hours before bed. But if you really don't find that it impacts you that much, a little sip here and there is totally fine. The scent of the tea can be relaxing. The whole ritual of it can be really relaxing. I wonder how you feel about that because, you know, fragrances can add a lot to your comfort or at, at least your sense of comfort. And um, as they all say, lavender helps you drift off to sleep e more easily. Is that really true for you? Lavender it helps to relax some people and they relax their bodies and their brains. And if you're someone who likes scents to help you relax, by all means use it. I'm a huge fan of rituals and routines before bed because if you do similar things, you have similar routines, similar scents before bed, that helps to give your brain the signal that bedtime is about to come and sleep's about to come. So whatever you find you gravitate towards that relaxes you and that you do routinely is perfect. I always have a, an, an alarm clock on my phone and I keep it next to the bed. I love people to go old school and to really keep tech outside their bedroom. So we usually say about an hour to two hours before bed, that's when you want to start thinking about dimming the light. So we were talking about light exposure being important during the day. Now you want to almost create a fake sunset in your room. An hour to two hours before bed, try to really limit the tech because anything with a screen or most things with screens have something called blue light. And if you have your phone as an alarm clock, guess what? You're gonna be very tempted to look at it for other things. True. And that blue light makes your brain think that the sun is still out and can make it harder for you to unwind and be able to actually fall asleep. Now, I really have to ask you, yeah. what's your sleep routine at night? Okay, so the, where it starts for me is I have two little kids. So I have a six-year-old and an almost 12-year-old. He's not so little anymore. But I make sure that I have their sleep routine on point most days. Now, it's not going to be perfect. There are going to be things that get in the way. But I make sure that I get them in bed and asleep so that then I can then go to sleep. So once they're in bed and asleep and I've gotten the other stuff done, I try to protect at least 30 minutes, but usually an hour. But it's not every night I can do it 
where I can then go and do some unwinding. So what I tend to do is I go up to my bedroom, I um, have the lights very dim, and I will go and I'll wash my face, do whatever I need to do, brushing my teeth before bed. And the thing over the pandemic that I've started to do after I do all that is stretching. So I do some stretching, some very simple one, two minute meditations. That takes me about 20, 30 minutes. And then I get in bed when I'm sufficiently sleepy and I go to sleep. Well, that sounds actually like a quite a good um, routine. It's not, I don't overthink it. And I don't have too many steps. And I watch TV, but I do that all before that hour before I get in bed. And not in your bedroom, eh? because actually your bedroom should signal to you when you enter it. It really should. You shouldn't be watching TV for long amounts of time in your bed. I actually have a TV in my bedroom, which most people are surprised about, but I really only have it there for when I'm sick. So that's when I'll use it. But yeah. on a regular basis, it, the bed should be about sleep. That's what I really try to have my bedroom for. That sounds like an excellent end to this conversation. Uh, in the next time we're uh, talking, we're going to talk about how you set a stage for sleep properly. Yeah, we're going to talk all about what you should do in your bedroom to help optimize your sleep environment so that you can sleep even better. Ooh, look forward to that. Thank you.